Hello and welcome back. Today I've decided to finally dip my foot into the clipper pool. This is the Solvo clipper screen and I paid for this with my own money. However, if you're planning to check this out, I will leave a affiliate link to Solvo's website down below and I would appreciate if you used it. It would really help out the channel. What's in the box, man? According to what I've read on this, it's supposed to be clipper the easy way, which I'm all for. So let's continue the unboxing. Here's the user manual, which I'm sure I'll need. The mounting bracket for the new screen. And the screen itself. And in this box is the hardware and cables to attach it to the printer. So we have some mounting screws, T nuts, some other screws. Thumb drive. for the power supply. That's a little USB thing. You can see that. Some cables. Oh, that's a USB cable. USB micro. Power supply, and power jack, I'm assuming, for the screen. And a some kind of ribbon cable. Alright, and that's the unboxing. Now, let's get it installed. I'm going to do something I haven't done in a while. And read the manual. Okay, so first thing I did was take the old screen off. Removing that and its mounting studs was easy enough. Then unfortunately I had to remove one of my V-slot covers in order to use the included screws and T-nuts to hold the new mount in place. I'll have to measure and print another one. I had already taken my power supply off to make this next step easier, which was wiring the screen's power wire to the power supply. I just put the positive on the positive side, the negative on the negative side. Easy enough. Okay, and that's done. Now I just have to put my lights back on, remount the power supply which I will save you from having to watch. And once the power supply was back on, I reconnected the power and plugged the jack end of the screen's power wire into the screen and connected the two wires together with the plug on either end. I also plugged the included USB cable into the screen and fed it under the printer and over to the printer's motherboard where I obviously tried to put it in backwards the first time around. 
I will make this wiring look a lot better later. I just want to get it all plugged up for now. Then I went to my computer and formatted the SD card that I used with the printer. I plugged in the included thumb drive and dragged the firmware file from the motherboard firmware folder onto the SD card. Then I just put the SD card back into the printer. You gotta put it in the wrong way first. Okay, get rid of that. Oh man, let's see what happens. <laughs> I always do that. So turn the printer on. Clipper is attempting to start. And this is where I ran into a problem. No matter what I did, I kept getting this screen saying that the MCU was unable to connect. I searched Google and found where several other people had run into the same issue, but no solution. I thought this was supposed to be easy, so I got aggravated and gave up for the day. The next day, for really no particular reason, I tried using a different USB cable to see if that was the issue. I already had this long one nearby, so I just used it. Nothing happened until I put the SD card back in with the firmware on it and then booted the machine up. That's when I finally got it to boot into Clipper. So if you run into this MCU issue, hopefully this helps you out too. Using this one worked better, now I'm just going to have to get a shorter one. But anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and click home. Home all. Z Next, I clicked Z calibrate to set the Z offset, and then I click start. <clears throat> And here's where we calibrate the Z. Uh, I use this kind of card right here. It's like, I don't know, a fake credit card. Or even this thing. You can see the nozzle marks. Oh, I think I'll just use that. This came with some LED lights. But we're going to go... There we go. Starting to get closer. Ooh. I'm getting right about there. Let's go to point one. Raise. I'm going to say that's pretty good right there. Click accept. Continue. And this clipper will reboot. Now it wants you to do the Z tilt which raises this and it gets it right but I already know what's right so I'm not even gonna do that because I know that as soon as I do it the way they want to do it it's gonna get tilted and right now it's not tilted so I'm not doing that but what I'm gonna do is click machine leveling bed mesh and then calibrate and let that let that go After that, I installed the Solvo Cura Slicer from the thumb drive so I could print the acceleration sensor holder that they included. This is basically a stripped down version of Cura, so I probably won't be keeping it, 
but for this print, it'll do. And here goes the very first print. That's what I'm talking about. Holy crap. Dude. My, this thing is shaking my entire table. As you can see, it was shaking the entire table like crazy, so I had to break out some desk stabilizers that I designed and printed a while ago and get those back on. Anyway, I used some really old filament to print this, so I expected a lot of stringing, and once it was done, I realized I needed to readjust the Z offset, so I did that right away. I know it's old filament, so there's gonna be... Next, I removed this screw and mounted the acceleration sensor on the hot end with one of the supplied screws because they're longer. Then I just plugged the cable into it, and the other end onto the screen. The plugs are different sizes, so it'll only go in one way. Go to input shaper. Okay, I found it. Right now on the X it's 43. So I click auto calibrate. I don't know if you can see that. Measure the X axis. And I'll come back when that's finished. It's got to get all the way to 100. I know it's hard to see, but the x-axis went up 3 points from 43.8 to 46.8. And now to do the y-axis. I'm mounting it on the bed by screwing the accelerometer onto the mount and then sliding the whole thing on the edge of the bed. Uh, configuration? Yeah. Input shaping. It found it. Auto calibrate. Measure the Y. Please don't ruin the cable. And then I realized I should have ran the cable better. It should have come up from the back. But anyway, this worked. In the end, the y-axis went from 41.8 to 50.2. But while those were running, I went back to the computer and made my way to this folder where I could see the main Cura version folder. I opened up the thumb drive in a folder next to it, and I opened the folder called Configuration File, and then I clicked the SV06 folder inside there. Then I grabbed the two folders within that folder and dragged them over to the Cura version folder. This allowed me to use the SV06 Clipper printer profile in Cura, and it brought all the profiles with it. Now I don't need to use Solvel's version of Cura. In there, I sliced this calibration cube just to test print over Wi-Fi. And just so you can see the difference in speeds, the Clipper version says it takes 10 minutes, and I'll come up here and choose the original SV06 profile, slice it, and 30 minutes. That's crazy. One third the amount of time. I know a lot of printers can do it faster and all, but for me, from what I'm used to, this is nuts. During the initial Clipper startup, I skipped over putting my Wi-Fi in, so I had to go to Configuration, then Wi-Fi. And I clicked this little arrow next to my network name and put my Wi-Fi password in. Then I was presented with this screen, which has my printer's IP address on it. I typed that IP address in my browser, and it opened up Mainsail. I didn't want to mess with this too much in here because it's all still very new to me, but I can see some macros and some readouts from the printer. And I also checked out the height map, which shows you your bed mesh. And I just put this replacement spring steel build plate on here not too long ago. And as you can see, it needs quite a bit of tweaking like the original one did. And then on the G-code tab, I clicked this arrow to bring in the calibration cube G-code I saved in Cura earlier. And then I printed it out from there. You can see your temps and everything right here from the dashboard, which is nice. I don't have to look over at the printer anymore, and I can eventually move the printer farther away from my desk.
I also think it's really cool that I can come back after the print is finished and see exactly how much time it took compared to what the slicer said. So it actually took just over 11 minutes to print, where Cura had only said 10, which 11 minutes still blows my mind. But let's check out how the cube turned out, and hopefully afterwards I can figure out some more cool stuff to do in here. To me, that looks pretty good. I'm freaking shocked. Dude, I can completely live with that. Holy crap. Alright, that's all I've got for you today. If you enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. I appreciate you tuning in. Catch you in the next one. And as always, have the best day ever.